I'm with Barkville Gold Mines. I'm the senior geologist for the project. Been there since 2015. Uh, most of you might uh, have heard the story before. It had a little bit of a tainted history, but uh, since uh, 2015, the price has gone from 27 cents up to a high as a, a dollar 49, basically brought on by new management, new shareholder base, um, and getting rid of debt and having money in the bank. Everyone's seen this slide before, I won't go through it. Where are we? We're located in the uh, Caribou District, um, basically 78 kilometers from the town of Quinnell, all paved roads. We have a 100% owned QR mill, which is 120 kilometers away. Um, historically, there was about four and a half million ounces of, of placer and load gold production, 3.5 in placer, 1.2 in, in, in hard rock. Hard rock came from about three mines, which is our principal project area, Mosquito Creek Mine, Ora Mine, and Caribou Gold Courts. Um, Placer Creeks, there's 101 Placer Creeks throughout the belt. Uh, the land package was pretty much fragmented. Uh, one of the good thing our old CEO did was put together one of the largest uh, unexplored land packages uh, within British Columbia. Just our basic shareholder base. 52% um, of the company is owned by Osisco. We have 55 million bucks or 50 million in the bank today. This basically allows us to explore properly, do systematic geological work with a strong shareholder base that doesn't want instant gratification right away. You know, we're not a company that wants to drill promotional holes. We want to understand the geology, use the geology and the model to then target with our drilling. And that's what having a strong shareholder base uh, like Osisco does for us um, to develop the project properly. Um, what we do right now, we have a short-term vision. We want to initiate uh, mining on Bonanza Ledge, which we will um, in the middle of July. What that does is generates about 15 million bucks after tax free cash flow a year. That allows us to take that money and invest it back into our exploration and develop a long-term asset on both Cow and Island Mountain and the rest of the district. Um, you know, we're looking at a, you know, a 20 year mine life, 2,000 ounce um, per day type of asset with an on-site milling facility and not trucking 120 kilometers away. Like I said, what's gone on since the new management? You know, we updated uh, uh, our geological model. There was no geological model. Before we stepped in, we drilled about 500 holes. Um, we, we initiated uh, underground and, and sampling and mapping programs so we can understand the geology. We upgraded the mill. We developed 131 new targets that will be explored systematically. We reached uh, an agreement with um, Lataco Dini, which is our, our native group in the area. Uh, updated our health and safety policies so that we can um, have our, our, our mines permit amendment, which we just got. 2017, we'll drill 130,000 meters, probably one of the most aggressive drill programs in Canada, aside from Osisco Mining. Uh, we'll do about 75,000 tons from Bonanza Ledge at a diluted head grade of about 6.5 grams per ton. What does this do? Again, it, it generates 15 million bucks in after tax free cash flow. 2018, another 120,000 meters. Again, this will take Cow Mountain, Island Mountain, and Barkerville Mountain up to an MI, and we'll do another 43101 in 2018. Um, we'll probably complete the BC Vein Bonanza Ledge mining and initiate underground development for a bulk sample and underground exploration drilling. 2019, another 120,000 meters, permitting for a new on-site milling facility, continued development and exploration. One thing we should know, we're fully financed till 2019 with our 55 million in the bank. Um, principal project area, we call it the six of the 67. We have 67 kilometers of, of strike. We're only focusing on six kilometers. 1.3 million ounces of historical production um, we're looking at mid-Cretaceous mesothermal veins similar to what you see in the Abitibi. Uh, one thing that's 
uh, should be noted this camp has never been touched below 450 meters. So, you know, they're mining at a kilometer and a half in the Abitibi and nothing's been touched. With recent drill results, these veins do continue at depth. Um, this is basically the six of the 67, a long section. We inherited 100 and about 100 kilometers in underground workings. This allows us to go back in and understand the geology a lot better and sample and see what's actually there. Like I said, 67 kilometers of strike. Um, this area hasn't been systematically and properly explored because of a lack of understanding in the geological model. Um, before coming in, our hit rate in our drilling was about 1 in 10. From 2015 to now, it's about 9 in 10, 10 in 10. Um, Bonanza Ledge, which we initiate production on this year, all underground. It used to be an open pit. We re redesigned it when we came in, just because the strip ratio went from 7 to 10 and a half to 1. So redesigned it for a wholly underground operation. Like I said, 150,000 tons for three years at a diluted head grade at six and a half. Generates 15 million bucks in after tax free cash flow, doing about 30,000 ounces a year. That's just a little 3D model of it. You see Bonanza Ledge and, uh, and the foot wall, BC vein and the hanging wall, fault fill vein system. Um, at open all along strike and down dip. There's one panel that we've defined off for a measured and indicated resource. Uh, 684,000 tons at 7.2 grams, which is 158,000 ounces. This is just for Bonanza Ledge and Cow Mountain, or for Bonanza Ledge and BC Vane. We've taken Cow Mountain off the books. We'll reissue a 43-101 for Cow and Island in 2018. Here's a, just a simple long section of Cow Mountain. You know, people might be familiar with the Cow Mountain resource. Uh, basically, we've taking it completely off the books and redesign a model and we'll be putting another resource out in 2018 that is geologically constrained which in the past it has not been geologically constrained and and um, that'll be redone in 2018. These are just uh, five meter drill composites from 81 to 2017 with these axial planar veins in gold and ex sheer external veins in purple. Um, another thing to be 43101 compliant, that was another mistake in the Cow Mountain resource. No drilling prior to 1981 could be used, and it all had to be thrown out. So a lot of the drilling had to go to confirm uh, historical drill holes. Here's a couple of new drill intersections from Island Mountain. You know, we have hole IM1732, which was 32 grams over 30 meters, directly right below it. Uh, on an undercut was hole 78 with uh, 11.4 grams at 20 for 28 and a half meters. Right beside that uh, was a 40 gram over over three. So these things are open at depth and down plunge. We we actively engage in the community. We um, we signed our First Nations agreement with Lataco Denis. And Soda Creek has a small claim down to the south. Strong management, you know, I'm not important enough to make it on this slide, but, um, you know, our Chris Loder, our president and CEO, led the, probably the most successful green fields and grassroots exploration program with Anglo Gold Ashanti since uh, Anaconda days. Paul Geddes, our vice president of exploration, just left um, the Rainy River project. Uh, Luke Lassard is the CEO of Falco and one of the key founding members of OSISCO. Francois Visna is with OSISCO. Uh, Andreas Dinajero was with Sprott Mining. And then a strong leadership board. I like to say this is kind of a mining hall of fame. You have Sean Rusin, who is the original founder of OSISCO Mining, um, who is the CEO of OSISCO Gold Royalties. Anthony McCooch which is Kirkland Lake Gold, President and CEO of Lakeshore Gold, Ian Gordon, uh, Chris Loder, who I mentioned, Morris, who's um, part of Nighthawk Gold, uh, John Kukovic, another uh, famous mining executive. Thanks. Appreciate it.